Exterior, downtown street, day. Cat emerges from a store. Patrick is waiting for her, leaning casually against her front fender. Nice ride, vintage fenders. Are you following me? I was in the laundromat. I saw your car. Came over to say hi. Hi. She moves to open the door, but he slides over and blocks her way. Not a big talker, huh? Depends on the topic. My fenders don't really whip me into a verbal frenzy. You're not afraid of me, are you? Afraid of you? Why would I be afraid of you? Well, most people are. Well, I'm not. Well, maybe you're not afraid of me, but I'm sure you've thought about me naked, huh? <laughs> Am I that transparent? I want you. I need you. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. She opens the door and forces him out of the way. She starts to pull out and is blocked by Joey's sports car, which pulls up perpendicular to her rear and parks. What is it? Asshole day? Hey, do you mind? Not at all. He continues on into the store. Kat stares at him in disbelief, then backs up fast. Her vintage fenders crash into the door of Joey's precious ego mobile. Patrick watches with a delighted grin as Joey races back to his car. You bitch! Cat watches with an innocent look of surprise. Whoops! Interior. If you're planning on asking me out again, you might as well just get it over with. Would you mind? You're kind of ruining this for me. You're not surrounded by your usual cloud of smoke. I know. I quit. Apparently they're bad for you. You did? You know, these guys are no bikini kill or raincoats, but they're, they're not bad. He stands and heads into the crowd. Steamed for a moment, Kat rushes after him, stunned. You know who the raincoats are? Why, don't you? I was watching out there before. The song ends and there is a moment of silence in the club as he continues to use his loud club volume voice. Huh. I've never seen you look so sexy. Crowd hears him clearly and laughs. He grins with embarrassment. <laughs> Come to uh, Boogie's party with me. You never give up, do you? She begins to walk away through the crowd. Was that a yes? No. <laughs> well, was that a no? No. <laughs> I'll see you at 9.30 then. Cat completes her dance by falling off the table. Patrick catches her. Whoa. Uh, are you okay? I'm fine. She tries to sit up, but falls back again. You're not fine. Come on. He helps her to walk away from the table and down the hall. I just need to lie down somewhere. Uh-huh. You lie down and you'll go to sleep. Sleep is good. Yeah. Not if you have a concussion. Uh, exterior, Bogey's house, night. A few party goers stand around as Patrick guides her toward a stone bench. Come on, here, sit down. As Patrick sits Cat down, Cameron comes up next to him. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a little busy right now. Hey, we need to talk. I'm a little busy right now. Can you give me a second? Patrick steps aside with him. It's off. Okay, the whole thing is off. What are you talking about? She never wanted me. She wanted Joey the whole time. Cameron, do you like the girl? Yeah. Yeah, and is she worth all this trouble? Well, thought she was, but you know, I- Well, she is or she isn't. See, first of all, Joey is not half the man you are. Secondly, don't let anyone ever make you feel like you don't deserve what you want. Go for it. Pat begins to fall off the bench and Patrick catches her again. Oh, come on. He stands her up and they walk away. Come on. Patrick continues walking an oblivious cat away from the party. Cameron stands there, unsure how to make use of this advice. 
Exterior, the street outside Bogey's house, night. Patrick marches Cat down the street, holding her up. They head up the hill. You're so patronizing. <laughs> Leave it to you to use big words when you're smashed. She pushes his arm off and tries to walk on her own. I don't think so. She falls down and stands back up again. Okay. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I told you. You may have concussion. You don't care if I never wake up. Sure I do. Why? They reach a set of two swings hedged by Ivy and stop. Well then, because then I'd have to start taking out girls who actually like me. <laughs> like you could find one. <laughs> See that there? Who needs affection when I have blind hatred? Let me sit down for a while. She walks over to the swings and flops down, moving her hands to hang on to the ropes. She sits and looks at him for a moment with a smile, then falls over backward, just oh. in time to be caught again. Jesus. Patrick sits on the other swing. So why'd you let him get to you? Who? Joey. I hate him. Well, you've chosen the perfect revenge. Mainlining tequila. They both laugh. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Stops the swing. No. What do they say? Cat is asleep, her head resting against the swing's rope. He's concerned about her falling asleep with a possible concussion. No, 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 Cat. Come on, wake up, look at me. Listen to me, cat, open your eyes. He slaps her and she slowly opens her eyes. Hmm. Hey, your eyes have a little green in them. He sighs with relief and smiles. They make meaningful eye contact and she then vomits. <laughs> In the passenger seat, she listens to the stereo. I can do this. Do what? This. She points it to the radio. Start a band? No, install car stereos. Yeah, start a band! My father would love that. Patrick pulls up to her house and stops the car. You don't strike me as the type that would ask your father's permission. She turns to look at him. Oh, so now you think you know me? I'm getting there. Her voice loses its venom. The only thing people know about me is that I'm scary. Yeah, well, um, no picnic myself. They eye each other, sharing a moment of connection. So, uh, what's with your dad? Is he a you know, pain in the ass? No, he just wants me to be someone I'm not. Who? Bianca. Ah, Bianca. No offense or anything. I mean, I know everyone digs your sister, but um, she's without... Cat uh... stares at him with new admiration. You know, you're not as vile as I thought you were. She leans drunkenly toward him. Their faces grow closer as if they're about to kiss, and then Patrick pulls away. Uh, maybe we uh... <laughs> should do this another time. Cat stares at him, pissed, then gets out of the car and stomps off. Here, this should take care of the flowers, the limo, the tux, everything. Just make sure she gets to the prom. Patrick's conscience seems to be bothering him. You know what? I'm sick of playing your little game. He hands back the cash. Joey reaches into his pocket again and looks around. You sick of, let's say, $300? Patrick looks a bit tortured, but eventually takes the money. Interior, guitar store, day. Kat is playing a guitar with headphones on. Patrick comes up behind her, then decides to leave her alone. Interior, bookstore, day. Patrick scans the store for Kat, sees her, and follows her from the next row of books. When, the reach, when they reach the end of the aisle, he confronts her. Excuse me. Have you seen the feminine mystique? I've lost my copy. 
What are you doing here? I heard there was a poetry reading. You're so... Charming. She turns and begins to walk away. Awesome. Unwelcome. You're not as mean as you think you are. You know that? And you're not as badass as you think you are. Ooh, someone still has their panties in a twist. <laughs> Don't for one minute think you had any effect whatsoever on my panties. Ooh, then what did I have an effect on? Other than my upchuck reflex? Nothing. She heads for the door, handing him a copy of the Feminine Mystique as she leaves. Interior, cafeteria, day. Cameron and Michael flank Patrick as he piles food onto his tray. You're right. She's still pissed. Eat love, renew thy force. Hey, man, don't say shit like that to me. People can hear you. Sorry. Look, you embarrass the girl. Sacrifice yourself on the altar of dignity and even the score. Even Patrick scowls and walks away. Listen, don't say shit like that to him. People can hear you. Interior, hallway, day. Patrick hands a wad of cash to a pudgy kid and smiles. Interior, field announcer's booth, day. A pair of hands are scanning the controls for the school stadium's audio, audio setup. One hand holds a cordless microphone. The other turns up the volume on a switch labeled field mic announce. Exterior, the bleachers, day. Looking down on the field where the girls are practicing soccer, Patrick stands atop the bleachers with the microphone in his hand and begins to sing an old love song. I love you, baby. And if it's quite all right, I need you, baby. To spend the lonely night. And if you love me, baby, let me love you. He completes the first verse as everyone watches, then gives a signal to the pudgy kid he met in the hall earlier. The kid is the leader of the school marching band, which then chimes in and begins playing the music for the song. Cat <laughs> <laughs> is thrilled. Uh, Patrick continues singing and dancing around on the bleachers until two cops arrive. They grab him as the soccer team applauds his performance. He breaks free and continues hamming about Spanks an officer's bum as he passes, then <laughs> runs away. Cat is obviously flattered. Here <laughs> in the bay, day, Patrick and Cat pedal a small rented leisure boat. They are laughing together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't thank you enough for helping me sneak out of detention. Very cool. No problem. I thought for sure I was busted when I was climbing out the window, I tell you. So, how did you keep him distracted? Oh, I dazzled him with my wits. <laughs> so, what's your excuse? For? Acting the way we, we do. I don't like to do what people expect. Why should I live up to other people's expectations instead of my own? So you disappoint them from the start and then you're covered, right? Something like that. Uh, then you screwed up. How? You never disappointed me. Are you up for it? Up for what? He motions to the sign for a paintball game. Exterior, paintball park, day. They chase each other around and get covered in paint, having a good time of it. Eventually, they end up falling down and literally rolling in the hay, caught in an embrace and a short bit of lip suck action before the game continues. Exterior, Stratford House, day. Patrick pulls up outside Cat's house and they get out. Paint still streaks their hair. No, none of that stuff is true. State trooper? Fallacy. Uh, dead guy in the parking lot. Rumor. The duck? Hearsay. Bobby Ridgway's balls. Fact. But he deserved it. He tried to grope me in the lunch line. Fair enough. The accident? It's real. I lived in Australia until I was 10. With the pygmies. Close. With my mom. 
Where were you last year? I know the porn career is a lie. Do you? They pause for a moment then laugh. Tell me something true. Something true. Okay. I hate peas. No. <laughs> something real. Something no one else knows. Okay. You're sweet and sexy and completely hot for me. You're amazingly self-assured. Has anyone ever told you that? I tell myself that every day, actually. He kisses her. Go to prom with me. Is that a request or a command? Come on, go with me. No. No, why not? No, I won't go with you. Why not? Because I don't want to. It's a stupid tradition. Come on. People won't expect you to go. Cat turns to him, getting angry. Why are you pushing this? What's in it for you? <laughs> he plays the role of the guilty accused husband, answering with an accusatory question. Oh, so I need to have a motive to want to be with you? You tell me. God, you need therapy. You know that? Has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> Answer the question, Patrick. Nothing. There's nothing in it for me. Just the, the pleasure of your company, okay? He takes out a cigarette. She throws it away before she storms off and slams the door to the house. <sighs> Interior prom balcony night. Sorry, I was playing letters to Cleo in my head. Cat <laughs> ascends the grand staircase and stops. Patrick notices and comes up behind her. <laughs> wow. You too. He hands her a rose. Where'd you get a tux at the last minute? No, oh, just something I had, you know, lying around. Oh. Where'd you get that dress? Oh, just something I had, you know, lying around. He smiles. Listen, I'm really sorry that I questioned your motives. I was wrong. You're forgiven. Okay. Ready for the prom? Yes, ma'am. A new song begins and Kat recognizes it. It's her favorite band. Oh my God. It's- I called in the favor. Kat stares in honest appreciation as the lead singer of her favorite band appears on stage and makes her way to the crowd to sing directly to Kat. She turns back toward the stage and Patrick kisses Kat. The music plays. Interior prom dance Interior. floor immediately after. Patrick and Kat continue to slow dance in good spirits. Milwaukee. What? That's where I was last year. I wasn't in jail. I don't know Marilyn Manson. I didn't sleep with a Spice Girl. I, I don't think. Uh, you, you see, my, my grandpa... He was ill, so I spent most of the year on his couch watching Wheel of Fortune and making SpaghettiOs. End of story. <laughs> no way! He's interrupted by Joey pulling him aside. Hey, what's Bianca doing here with that cheese dick? I didn't pay you to take out Kat so that some little punk could snake me with Bianca. Kat has heard everything. Patrick looks at her pleadingly. Nothing in it for you, huh? She leaves. Patrick follows. Cat heads for the stairs and Patrick catches up to her as they reach the top. Would you give me a chance to... You were paid to take me out by the one person I truly hate. I knew this was a setup. Yeah, it wasn't like that, okay? Really? What was it like? A down payment now and then a bonus for sleeping with me? No. I didn't care about the money, okay? I, I cared... I cared about you. She turns to face him with a countenance of both sadness and anger. You are so not who I thought you were. In desperation, he grabs her and kisses her. After a second, she jerks away and flees down the stairs out of sight. Bianca comes running from behind Patrick, sees what has happened, and stops. Well, she Kat walks to her car, alone. When she opens the door, she's greeted with the same Fender Stratocaster guitar that Patrick saw her playing in the store before, declining in the front seat. She picks it up slowly, inspecting every detail as Patrick leans in behind her. Nice, huh? 
a fender strap is this for me yeah i thought you could use it you know when you start your band besides i had some extra cash you know some asshole paid me to take out a really great girl is that right yeah <laughs> but i screwed up i uh, I fell for her. She blushes and looks down. Really? It's not every day you find a girl who will flash someone to get you out of detention. Kat is surprised and embarrassed that he found out about the flash. Oh, God. She laughs. She takes, <laughs> she takes this as a sign <laughs> to kiss her, and he does. She lets him this time, then breaks it off suddenly. You can't just buy me a guitar every time you screw up, you know? <laughs> He winces. Yeah, I know. But then, you know, there's always drum and bass and maybe even one day a tambourine. He gives her another kiss, but <laughs> she breaks off again. And don't think that you can just... He kisses her to shut her up, not letting her end it this time. As the music plays, we pan out of the parking lot across to the school building and up to where the band is playing on the roof. The music plays and the credit rolls. I want you. You want me. I need you to be me. I love you. Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't.